So if this is exactly the same as what we saw up north, then, you know, is there an ophiolite here too? Well, there are sheeted dikes to the what to the left to the west here. As you just as you come into the town of Auburn, you, actually as we go out, I'll point them out. Uh, there's a series of uh, foliated sheeted. It's actually a dike screen complex. And sheeted dikes. I'm getting sorry. I'm getting gams mixed up. At Oroville, it's dike screen complex. Here, it's actually just sheeted dikes. And then you go into a bunch of serpentine. And, and a bunch of other things in the old road cuts. I haven't looked at these road cuts since they realigned the freeways to Auburn, so I can't really say a lot of you know what's there. But, but uh, uh, yeah, actually, there's a bit of that. But there's a there's an issue, and that is that this this dike complex is exposed here. It's also exposed exposed at Folsom, as exposed in the southern part of it, uh, along the Bear River, the southern part of the Smartville complex. And if that's the same dike sweep that you know, the swarm that comes through, then the movement on this fall and the placement of any opioid has to predate that, that <laughs> series of dikes. And I think they've been dated at about 159, 160. So we're getting the same ages. So we have a lot of things happening. Uh, in a very few million years along here. That said, I think if you look at, at people like uh, Michael Wigan's work in, in, in Irian Jaya and some of the other work in, in Indonesia, you'll see that a very lot of, of, of different things can happen in a million to five million years. So uh, I think we're just still, we're still of a platform mind here in, in um, and most of our geological circles, I think. We don't really think about what happens in, in really active zones. Like I say, I think Indonesia is a better model for what has transpired here in the past than, than, than uh, Kansas. Or <laughs> yeah. surprise. Uh, but Indonesia is a real head scratcher just looking at it on the map. Indonesia is a head scratcher <laughs> looking at it on the map. This yeah. is a head scratcher. The American River. Oh, the American River is just down below you. Oh, and you can actually see it right there. Over okay? oh, there. Yeah. I thought it was a shadow. No. Thank you. Um, when well, I studied this in college, it was a lot of fun. I got really interested in all the sheeted dikes and the fritatites and what fun it was to learn about how the earth works. But then I got to the point of saying, what's going on deeper? What, and they'd say, oh, well, there's these convection cells. And I go, what? And they'd show me these really primitive diagrams and a primitive thing of the model of the earth. And then I started saying, well, obviously, the earth inside deep down is much more complex than what they think. And I think there, there's various ways that they're starting to see that there's just blebs and hot spots and all that going on. So, and also we can see that the deposition or whatever formation of ophiolites is not constant with time throughout the history yeah. of the earth. Yeah. So, my question of course is, how do those two things interrelate, right. please? Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, how many, okay. 20 words for that, okay. First thing to say is I think you're absolutely correct that the that the, the mantle is probably compositionally much more heterogeneous than, than most people think it is. Uh, I think I published a paper a decade ago with uh, some colleagues uh, that talked about historical contingency as, a, as a, an issue related to the composition of magmas that come out in ophiolites, saying basically that things that are called supra-subduction zone now actually relate to super subduction zone environments now and they don't necessarily relate to that in the past because the mantle is more complicated and uh, the the uh, sort of transfer of composition or, or material in the mantle is actually very slow so it could be that you subducted some mantle and if you derive some ophiolite from that it may give you a super subduction composition even though it was it was formed at a mid-ocean ridge spreading center so 
that's the point number one. There are places, for example, in, in Albania and, and northwestern Greece where you can walk in a day. You can walk from things that are mid-ocean ridge compositions and you can walk in essentially continuous exposure to things that are super subduction zone compositions. Mm. Now, I don't see how you do that uh, with the modern sort of models uh, in mind. So that's point number one. In terms, it is true, if you look at Ophiolites in history, you look at their ages, they seem to be, there seems to be episodic. But you have to remember, there, there are three ages that you need to think of with Ophiolites. There's the spreading age, at, forming at whatever spreading center occurred then. Then you have what I've called the separation age, which means you separate the Ophiolite complex from its spreading environment. And then there's the emplacement age, which is also, you could call it the abduction age, if you will. Those are three separate things. In, in much of the Mediterranean, where a lot of these concepts got developed, you can say that the oceans were narrow, they spread, and then converted to, you had probably transformed faults that converted to subduction zones that then migrated into, or continents migrated into these subduction zones, collided with them, and the Ophiolites were in place before there was a chance for any island arc edifice to get developed. Yet these things give super subduction zone compositions. So, and I, but I say, I think there's a, a gradation in there. There is an episodic sort of thing, but the question you have to ask is, are we looking at, it's a preservation issue more than perhaps a, a process issue that we're, that we're looking at here. So I don't know the, the, the final answer to that. That's as far as I can take it. Thank yeah. you, Dr. Morris. Thank you. OK, the, the last one. I have a, we, have one I, we have one more question. One huh? more question. Yeah. Directly to Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah. All across Africa, there's these terrific yeah. orogenic belts, mm -hmm. and there's very the literature is really sparse as yeah. far as relating right. the subduction processes right. to all of these belts. Right. And um, one of the arguments that I've constantly heard, um, particularly in the Damara belt, is that if you don't have an ophiolite, it's not a suture. I wonder if you'd like to comment on that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not correct. There are a lot of other things that you could have, that you, that you have, like a shear zone, you know, a myelinite, wide myelinite zone. Uh, in, when you have fossils, which you might not have in the Dameron Belt, um, it's differences in fossils across through there. It's, it's um, you know, calcalcum plutonic belts. Uh, it's belts of deformation. And so there's a, whole, there's a whole list of things, which I can't remember right now. Uh, that, that give you uh, uh, some evidence that you have a suture. You don't just need ophiolite. Because, you, you know, if you had two uh, consuming margins hit each other, um, you'd have lost an ocean, but you wouldn't necessarily have any ophiolite in place. Just fall. Well, it would just, you know, I mean, you, you see that happening between Sal uh, Sangi and Halmahira today, uh, they're colliding. In Mindanao, it's this this colliding system of opposing subduction zones has already gone to completion, and the intervening, intervening plate is just it's going down two tubes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, even worse than being a faculty member. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all, right? Thank you. Okay, thank yeah. you so thank much you. from all of us. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank I'm you supposed much. to give you an NCGS mug, but I realize I don't have one. So <laughs> Chevron gave me a <laughs> okay. 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 Okay, fine. And I want to thank a few others yeah. who really paid their way. But Health of Society, John Christian is one. Dan Day is one. Here, here. Uh, Guy Tate is one. Mark Gatorman is one. Miss Higgins, uh, he helped us. So thank you all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's it. Okay.